getting answers from all across Northern California. This is the CBS 13 News at 5. Folks, we have some breaking news out of Dallas, Texas. The police department receiving an anonymous threat, a new threat against law enforcement across the city. Good news, everyone. I'm Ron Jones. Welcome to the CBS 13 News at 5 p.m. Security is really tight in Dallas, Texas as we speak. New video coming into the newsroom shows officers taking up defensive positions near the department. One report indicates officers are looking for a suspicious person in a nearby parking garage. We've noticed officers with assault rifles pushing the media back away from the department. Now this, as the department continues to mourn the death of five officers killed during a protest Thursday evening. And we're also learning more details about the gunman who ambushed those officers and shattered a peaceful protest in Dallas Thursday. Kenneth Craig has more on the investigation from Texas. A police motorcade escorted the body of transit officer Brent Thompson to a funeral home south of Dallas Saturday. Along the way, people held American flags and saluted the fallen officer. Police say Micah Johnson murdered Thompson and four other police officers in sniper-style shootings as a peaceful protest was ending Thursday night in Dallas. CBS News sources say the former Army reservist had been building an arsenal over the last two years. CBS News also learned Johnson was honorably discharged from the Army even after he was accused of sexually harassing a female soldier. Speaking from the NATO summit in Poland, President Obama called Johnson demented. So we cannot let the actions of a few define all of us. Police also found bomb-making materials inside Johnson's home and a journal. They say he may have been planning the attack here for a while. He was trained to fight in our military for us, and he used it against us. He was an American terrorist is what he was. Cheryl Hurd came to police headquarters to express her gratitude. She was among a group who joined together in grief as they said a prayer for the officers who survived and the five who made the ultimate sacrifice. Now, Johnson was killed by uh, police during that standoff. So let's bring you up to date to that breaking news out of Dallas, Texas right now here, folks. Uh, the police department has received a new anonymous threat against law enforcement. This is across the city. The latest video coming into our newsroom shows the officers taking up defensive positions near the department. And we're also learning that they're looking for a suspicious person in a nearby garage. As soon as we get more information, of course, we will bring it to you. We're also learning the names of the officers killed during last Thursday's sniper fire. There include 43-year-old officer Brent Thompson. He had just gotten married. 32-year-old officer Patrick Zamaripa. He leaves behind a wife and a two-year-old daughter. 55-year-old Michael Smith leaves behind a wife and two daughters, ages 10 and 12. And 40-year-old Michael Kroll and senior corporal Lauren Ahrens, who started out as an officer with the Los Angeles Police Department. Now, family members tell us Ahrens grew up in the San Fernando Valley. He worked for the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department for 10 years before moving to Dallas in 2002. His family got the call in the middle of the night that Ahrens didn't make it after surgery. His father spoke with us via Skype, saying he was passionate about his job, but he truly loved his family. The pinnacle of his life was his children, but that same guy would have tea with his daughter. Now, Orange, a 14-year veteran with the Dallas Police Department, leaves behind a wife and two kids. Memorials for the victims continue to grow across the country, but there is still no word on when and where those services will be held. And developing here in Northern California, the Black Lives Matter movement taking to the streets of San Francisco this evening. An Interstate 80 on-ramp is back open after protesters shut it down. This all taking place not too far from the Bay Bridge. So far, no word on arrest or injuries. Meanwhile, hundreds of people gathering in Baton Rouge at a convenience store for another day of protests. This is the site where Elton Sterling died at the hands of two white police officers. Some wore T-shirts that read, I can't keep calm, I have a black son, or Black Lives Matter. And protesters in Phoenix, Arizona, confronting officers in riot gear last night. At one point, officers deployed tear gas to the crowd. No injuries have been reported in that protest.
All right, new at 5 o'clock, a councilwoman in Nevada City now apologizing for comments she made saying America's police officers are the blame for the Dallas shootings. Renette Senum posted the controversial comments on her Facebook page. She wrote, quote, they have obviously been given directives to go out there and kill. But she now says, I would like to extend an apology first and foremost to the Nevada City Police Department, whom I have the utmost respect for. In no way did I mean to offend our highly regarded officers with my comments on Facebook. She also goes on to say, I apologize for using such a broad brush that our local officers felt they were included in my statement. Now, Cinema has since uh, deleted that online post, but the sting still lingers. The Nevada City Police Officers Association is asking for her resignation. Well, for the very latest on the Dallas shootings and the recent threat made to the department, just visit our website. There it is on your screen, cbs13.com. In other news, here's a first look at the man accused of shooting a Missouri police officer in the neck earlier this week. This is 31-year-old Antonio Taylor. He's being charged with assault of an officer, armed criminal action, and being a felon in possession of a firearm. The officer, who has not been identified, was shot during a traffic stop, and he is still in critical condition. All right, new tonight. Stockton police respond to calls early this morning about shots fired in the 4400 block of Cotton Court. When officers got there to the scene, they located a 29-year-old man suffering from gunshot wounds. Officers say they tried to save the guy, but his injuries were fatal. No suspects or motives at this time. New at 5 o'clock, Roseville and Placer counties are showing the nation they stand for equality for all. A vigil just ended a few minutes ago in the town square to honor those who lost their lives in the Orlando shooting. CBS 13's Kelly Ryan joins us live from Roseville with the importance of today's vigil. Kelly? That's, that's right, Ron. You can see right behind me, just as you say, it is just concluded. They felt a great deal of support from this community for this vigil today. All right, Kelly Ryan reporting for us out of Roseville. Thank you. A playful hobby or intrusive nuisance? A weekend flight launching a local debate about drones. A Carmichael woman noticed a drone flying above her home. She contacted CBS 13, wanted to know, is it a violation of her privacy? CBS 13's Macy Jenkins is in West Sacramento in a neighborhood, and this is what she found out. I looked at it and I waved and said, hi. <laughs> and their film was rolling, I would look the camera in the eye and say, well, you know where you are, so come and get it, and let's have a conversation. All right, by the way, in California, recording someone with a drone is not a criminal violation, but a civil one. Right now, there are several bills pending to regulate flying drones over schools and prisons. New at 5 o'clock, a children's dental office throwing a party to show kids that going to the dentist can actually be fun. Kids Care Dental in Natomas invited their surrounding communities to a block party earlier today, having a lot of fun there. Some of the kid-friendly celebrations include a bounce house, carnival games, Jamba Juice even provided some free smoothies. Kids Care hopes children will now have less anxiety visiting the dentist. Our focus is really around having fun and kids enjoying going to the dentist. Not quite sure if they had candy at the party today. Uh, by the way, Kids Care Dental has 14 offices throughout the greater Sacramento, San Joaquin, and Bay Areas. All right, straight ahead, new technology at the State Fair. How your veggies can now grow three times faster using very little water. Plus, two law enforcement families connected forever. The life-saving generosity keeping one officer alive. Also. And out of this world, get together. More on three nations coming together in a Russian space station. Hey, Lisa. Yesterday, we topped out at 91 degrees. Welcome back, everyone. Space capsule carrying astronauts from Russia, Japan, and the United States docking with the International Space Station after a, a two-day voyage. Now, when the hatch opened up, the new crew members entered the space station, greeted those already on board. The docking taking place uh, 254 miles above planet Earth. The capsule was launched from Kazakhstan on Thursday. Well, the California State Fair in full swing at Cal Expo. Gates open up this morning around 7 o'clock, and there's lots of brand-new exhibits and shows this year. Among the food and other activities, there's new technology on display that could change the agriculture industry. CBS 13's Christina Jane shows us how these new machines grow vegetables three times faster using very little water. We've got tomatoes over here. The food's going to taste exactly like it did when it first started growing. 
Wow, three times faster? Well, the EZ clone machine can be seen daily at the Hydro Ag Greenhouse at the Kaiser Permanente Farm. On the last day of the fair, guests will be able to take home a variety of uh, plants, their own plants. The fair runs through July 24th. All right, a lot more fun in store tonight at 6.30, the Beauty and the Beast Breed Show. 7.30, Bonnie Field will host a professional rugby match at 8 o'clock. You can catch a concert, then fireworks at 9.30, and the evening ends with a live karaoke band at 10 o'clock. The fair is going to run through July 24th. So um, I know you're kind of new to the area, but right. usually during this time of year, it is blazing hot at the California State Fair. I've heard that. Yeah, but it's really nice right now, pleasant. Very nice now. These days right here, probably you're going to be the coolest days of the fair. We do have a warm up coming uh, up here rather shortly. Yeah, all right. sorry to burst your bubble. <laughs> Coming up here next week, we are back into the 90s. I gotta say, before I hopped up on the yeah, set, I didn't right. see that thunderstorm. It just it just popped up so quickly. That's nice though. You know, I got excited. Little... Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, <laughs> weather, yeah. weather geek. Yeah, you got all fired up. But yeah. you know, at least it's not triple digit temperatures. Yeah, so not too bad. So still time to get out to the fair and enjoy that corn dog and funnel cake, all that good stuff. All right, thanks a lot, Lisa. Straight ahead, two local law enforcement families connected forever. The life-saving generosity keeping one officer alive. Plus, Serena Williams in the record books once again what she did on the court that hasn't been done in decades. Welcome back, everyone. Serena Williams has won her 22nd Grand Slam singles crown. Here's a look at that final serve. She plays with a lot of passion. Look at that. Williams beat Angelique Kirby uh, in the Wilmington final. She ties, she ties Steffi Graf's record for the most major championships in the open era. It's the seventh Wilmington title for the top seeded American. And it was a, a double triumph for Serena just hours after winning the singles. Well, she and her sister Venus won the sixth Wilmington doubles Grand Slam title. The win makes the fourth time. Serena won both singles and doubles titles in the same year. The sisters are now 14 and 0 in Grand Slam finals. I always knew that I was going to be a kidney donor. I just never knew, never knew who it was going to be. Two law enforcement families connected forever after an act of life-saving generosity. Folsom Police Sergeant Eric Beatty donated a kidney to Sacramento Sheriff's Deputy Nathan Wise a couple of weeks ago. They're talking about his life-saving operation. CBS 13's Adrian Moore has the interesting twist that drove Eric to donate. He'll uh, always be my brother. And we should point out that Nathan is still very sore, but he says he's looking forward to getting back to the gym and teaching his two young kids, Maggie and Nate Jr., how to fish. Eric is sore as well, and he's going to take some time off from work. Folks, uh, we're still working on that breaking news out of Dallas, Texas. I believe we have some live pictures coming out of the Lone Star State right now where the police department, the police department is on lockdown. We'll have more on that right after the break. All right, we have some breaking news coming out of Dallas, Texas right now. These are live pictures. A report indicates officers are looking for a suspicious person in a nearby parking garage. Officers, they have assault rifles. They are pushing the media back. This as the department mourns the death of five officers killed during a protest Thursday evening. Of course, we're going to stay on top of this breaking news story for you. We're going to have it on the CBS 13 News uh, tonight and also on CBS13.com.